Hey Bats and Ghouls, I hope you guys are doing okay. Welcome to Vamp Daddy's Spooky Goth Adventure. I am Ian, aka DJ Vamp Daddy. If you have paid any attention to this channel over the last two years, uh, wow, Jesus Christ, two years, um, you've probably seen a little bit of an evolution and change within myself, and I'm really happy with where I'm, I'm heading. Um, the only thing that I would change is I know I've gained a bit of weight during this pandemic, which brings me to the pandemic and 2020's dumpster fire shit show of everything that has happened this year has really put a solid kibosh on me getting to put more videos out and to do the kind of content that I'd like to for this channel. So with this vaccine coming and with changes in the winds politically, I hope 2021 is a, a much better year for all of us and that there is a sliver of hope. And I also hope that this video finds all of you that might be watching this doing, doing okay. That you know you haven't had any huge setbacks in your life, um, and hopefully, like you haven't had any loved ones or friends or uh, you know that may have been directly impacted by COVID. Um, it's kind of difficult because I can say for myself, I've had several people I know of impacted from it, um, but it is. I hate using the word, it is what it is, but in this situation, you know, we're, we're all kind of helpless and kind of a prisoner to what's going on. Um, I'm not going to ramble about that in this video, so I apologize if I have. 2020 wasn't a complete shit show for me. Uh, it actually gave me some time to reflect and figure some things out and where I was going and what I wanted to do, both with this channel and in my personal life, and I feel like that uh, I was able to achieve some of that. I started playing guitar this year. Um, that was one big new thing that happened for me. I also started doing, because of the pandemic, DJing, which is something I had never ever had any interest in doing prior. And it kind of landed in my lap and I found that I enjoyed doing it and curating music. Um, you know, So I've been doing live streams on Twitch and uh, mainly with Obscura Undead, though I do do the occasional show on my own. Um, it's just been something fun to do. So with that, uh, Obscure Undead put together a top 10 albums of 2020, and I was asked to include myself with that because I do work closely with the Obscure Undead collective team. And this is my first top 10 list. So I'm going to dig in. I kind of put this in no particular order when I sent it off because I was like just a scrambling mess, and I hate I hate having to like rank somebody or someone or a band ahead of another. So yes, I do have my standout favorites on this, but I would like to say that every album on here reflects something of me that I felt during 2020 that I enjoyed that I got something out of. So I divided myself up because my own music tastes lean towards a combo of goth rock guitar driven and the more synthy electro based acts. And so you'll see in this list, it's really like a good mix. And I keep looking over at my, my laptop to kind of see what, you know, as a refresher of what I'm looking at. Um, there is one caveat to this. I do have a bonus that goes into this that I'm gonna announce first because this track was released December 26 of 2019. So just a little over a year ago, and it came so close to the end of the year that I'm not sure if a lot of people had time to really give it a good listen by year end. And, you know, I'm sure it made it onto a few top 10 lists, but most people probably didn't get familiar with it until like January of this year. That would be the album, um, Are You Afraid of the Dark by Scary Black. Really good album, solid, goth rocky soundness to it. Is that a word, goth rocky? Um, you know, it's more guitar driven, some good synths in it. Scary Black's vocals are on point. Uh, I really enjoyed it. My favorite track on that album is Stay In Your Lane. And so therefore, ding, 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 Scary Black, honorable mention for 2020. So thank you. All right, so I'm gonna dig into my list now. Um, the first act I'm putting in here is a little bit different from all the others because it's more, 
a post-punk band as opposed to goth rock or death rock or um, you know dark wave or electro synth and that is the band specters with their album nostalgia this was uh, it's really I I really like this album it has a very strong and I sounds cliche because so many acts are like this but it has a very strong 80s vibe to it um, if very reminiscent of bands from the 80s like Echo and the Bunnymen, the U early U2, uh, maybe early In Excess, like it just has that feel to it, um, more guitar driven, you know, maybe some of like parts of, it could also sound like The Cure, maybe a little Joy Division. I know I'm throwing out all these big name bands in there, but that's the best comparison that I could give you. So that would be, I put that at number 10, and like I said, it's a little bit different from everything else. I'm going to go ahead and divide this list up into my synth and my uh, goth rock stuff. And we'll kind of go from there. So the next act I have is Black Male Cabaret and their album God's Verging on Sanity. Um, this is a really solid electronic act. Uh, they consider themselves like pop noir, I believe is the terminology that they use on their band camp to describe themselves. And the track that I've been playing the shit out of has been the song No Gold. Uh, really good, good rhythm to it. Like it would definitely get you on the dance floor moving around or at least tapping your feet. And the lead singer, her voice is really beautiful. Um, I just feel like, like this is a solid act. Uh, next up under that electronic umbrella is I Am The Shadow with the song Pitch Black. And this song is definitely, uh, or the album, there's a song called Pitch Black on it too. But the album is a solid album. I believe the band is from Portugal. And their lead singer, I believe his name is Pedro. Um, he has a really unique voice and the has several tracks on there that definitely I played repeatedly throughout my times streaming this year. I enjoyed it. And uh, I didn't really find, like, like overall, most of it was very much playable in any club, I believe, that you could put it on and, and have it as playing in a, a club for people to dance to. So uh, my next one that falls into that whole electronic uh, act would be the band Cellophan, and I believe they're from Italy. Um, they had their album come out officially right at the end of October, and that's Partners in Hell. Um, in fact, I'm waiting for my vinyl to show up. It's supposed to be here by like Saturday. But uh, yeah, so Cellophane, Partners in Hell, they released two tracks that I know of off of this that have kind of, you know, one came out like right in the beginning of the pandemic because I remember they, they were doing some, they had a video out for it and they were doing some live streaming events where they were playing it. And that is the song, There Must Be Somebody. And then uh, later this year, which I really, really like this song, is a song of Dinar Hopped. And I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm not sure. But anyways, that would be Cellophane. Uh, it's a good album. Solid tracks came off of it. And I really enjoyed it. So let's move. I'm going to put a little bit of a buffer here between the electro and the um, pure goth rock section. And I'm going to put in the band Morwan, which is... The album came out in uh, November, and it's a solo act. They are a Russian Eastern European uh, artist. It is a guy. It's a solo act, like I said, but they, they've been using the name Morwan. Um, the album is called Zola Zemlia, and I can tell you, like, they have showed up on multiple streams being played recently. Their song Night and Fog is fucking amazing. And I don't even know how to describe the sound of it. It's got a definite like tribal, definitely some like Eastern European sounds into it. But there's also like post-punk guitars. Um, his vocals are great. And I just wish I knew what the hell he was saying because I don't speak Russian or any of those Slavic dialects. But yes, more one I would definitely say go check out. It's it's a... Uh, it's the album is fire, pure, hot, smoking, awesomeness, and not dumpster fire, good fire. Um, you're like cooking major goth goodness with that. So now I'm going to move back into the goth rock realm, 
now that we've kind of separated that out i'm looking over again just to make sure i got everybody in here uh my next track uh, is raven said and their album beyond the darkest hours really solid pieces on that one i'm gonna also put in here um horror vacui who is a band from um italy as well their album living for nothing uh came out I believe like springtime and then uh, one of their releases they did a really great video um called the album's called my funeral party and it was uh a really interesting um i did a music video reaction for that for obscure undead and it had a lot of stop motion animation in it and i really enjoyed the video and i especially enjoyed the song and it was an artist I probably would have looked over because everybody hyped him up as death rock. And when I heard it, I didn't really feel like I got a lot of death rock har harshness to it. Um, it felt more like maybe leaning right in the middle between like goth rock and death rock. So I really liked horror vacui, uh, which I was mispronouncing as vacui, but it's vacui. I was corrected. Um, okay, so the next numbered item I have here is the wake perfume and fripperies this album came out uh, about two months ago it is the long-awaited return after 25 years of releasing a full-length album the wake is back they are one of the second wave of goths uh, forefront bands if you're not familiar with them and perfume and fripperies in my opinion doesn't disappoint uh, it is very different from some of their earlier stuff but it also feels like a natural progression and i really enjoyed this album there's some solid tracks on it hammer hall is really good uh, emily closer um rusted which uh, i believe that's the track that has caroline blind lending her vocals to uh, it's it's a really good album so it definitely made my top 10 list of the year then we also have, uh, let's see, what else comes there? Um, this is where I kind of like feel like they're kind of complementary to each other as bands, and that kind of makes sense because I know in real life they are, they are friends, and they collaborate and bounce things off of each other, and that would be these two bands coming up. Um, really kind of hard to, like, to say who I enjoy more, but one would be Sun Sombra, with their album 1000 graves i have done music video reactions uh, to several of their videos in the past and brandon pibus the lead for the band um, and actually the entire band itself they are really lending to leading the forefront of what i feel like is this 90s goth revival and i just kind of say you know it's like guilds of the nephilim meets the wake uh, you know, like that's the best I could describe their sound, but they've, they've made it their own. And I really enjoyed the hell out of 1000 Graves. Uh, there's several solid tracks off of it. Um, I think my favorite though really is 1000 Graves. So kind of figure from there. And then the other band, the complimentary band to Sun Sombra would be the Kentucky Vampires. Um, you know, I had listened to their earlier stuff and I enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed their album that came out back in March, I believe it was, for Crimson Curse. And Crimson Curse has some solid, solid stuff on there. It is goth rock at its finest, but at the same time, I feel like they are not, they are, they are offering something new to the genre. And uh, tracks that stand out really heavily for me um, would be uh, Holy Heretic. That one gets played a lot in streams, and it's a good one. It definitely uh, is more dancey with the rockness to it. So, you know, it definitely will have you tapping your, tapping your feet, moving around a bit when you're listening to it. The second one uh, for me would be Vampire's Coffin. Um, maybe I'm biased because I really like vampires. And then the final track that I really, really love because I enjoy old... Uh, horror films and that would be the song saint vincent which is an ode to vincent price uh, in my opinion and I, I just i really like it so there you go that is all in no particular order i think i got everybody covered on here yep i'm looking i did and 
that's my top 10 for 2020, my top 10 albums. I would say check those albums out if you're curious or interested. You can always find them on Bandcamp. I will put their links below. And I will also put the full listing up of the um, other Obscura Undead folk who had contributed to their top 10s uh, as well. I'll link that article as well below. Um, I really hope that 2020 was a sign of good things to come that, you know, maybe it, it helped us in some ways to come together as a community and figure out who we are and who we aren't. And I hope 2021 finds everybody that might be watching this stream um, in a better spot, that there will be a point where we can all get together and see each other and hug without fear of catching something or hurting somebody, that we can come together again in our, our sacred spaces of the dance floor and the bars and that good stuff comes in 2021. So if you liked this video, please click the like button. Please subscribe, you know, hit that, smash that subscribe button. Um, you know, and I always love getting feedback from people. I really appreciate it. Anyways, keep it spooky, stay safe and uh, happy new year.